It's confession time. My name is Cheryl. I was born and raised in the West, and I'm scared of horses. Cheryl, we're going to the Grand Canyon. Time to book a mule ride. Oh, this is something I've never seen. <laughs> Dude, you got your hands full. Right there. Have fun, Molly. See you, Cheryl. I made it back safely, and I have to be honest, I loved my mule ride. It was incredible. And so I thought I'd make a video for you to tell me all about my experience in planning my mule ride, what it was like to go on it, what I learned about the mules, and maybe help you plan it yourself if that's something you wanna do. So to get started, let's talk a little bit about what's available. At the Grand Canyon in the National Park, there's the North Rim and the South Rim. The South Rim is where most people go. In fact, 90% of people go to the South Rim. It's the part that's open year round. And then there's the North Rim, which is a little higher elevation, a little cooler, less populated, and it's open mostly May through October. And there's actually two different trail riding companies for each of those rims. So the South Rim is run by Zantera, um, which does a lot of the concessions for the park. And they offer two trail rides. The first one is the south rim trail where you're going to get to go a little bit into the canyon but you mostly stay on the rim it's it's two hours in the saddle three hours total time because they have to prep you for it it costs about 155 dollars to do that and then there's the other ride which is what you see in the movies where people are taking the it's a canyon one where you go down to the bottom of the grand canyon and you stay overnight at the phantom ranch and then you come back up on your mule those rides take about five and a half hours each way and they cost $700 per person. Now on the North Rim, they have three rides you can go on. The first one is the Inner Canyon, which is their most popular one. It's about three hours long and you actually get to go into the canyon. It's run by Canyon Trail Rides and that's the company I, we've actually used a couple of times. They do a great job. And it goes to the Supai Tunnel and back and that's really the most popular ride. Their next one is Uncle Jim's Point and that one is geared for people that are a little scared of heights. And, but the, the lady on the phone told me some, one of the benefits of that one is you can see across the canyon onto the, to the North Cape App Trail where people are hiking down and it's just a beautiful ride and that's also three hours those ones will cost you around a hundred dollars a person and then the last one is the hour long mule ride and that was the one that we went on actually because i i booked a little too late i didn't have the option to do the other one and also because i thought three hours might be a little long for the city slicker that i am i had my father come with me who was retired and also my eight-year-old daughter so we were quite the crew all city slickers not real familiar with riding horses and mules and we went on the hour-long trail which kind of takes you through a forest but also along the rim for just a little bit so those are what's available there mule riding is just one of the things you can do at the grand canyon besides look into the canyon and we have a whole other video i'll put right up here if you're interested in other activities at the grand canyon let's talk a little bit about your own qualifications to go on these mule rides now these wranglers know that 75% of the people that are coming out here to go on these mule rides are city slickers. We don't ride horses and they know this. And so they really take a lot of care in making sure that, that these mules are safe for anyone riding them. There are a few things that you have to have going for you to go on the mule ride. One is a weight restriction. For the longer rides, like the three hour and up, they, they need you to be under 200 pounds, but you can weigh up to 220 on the shorter rides. And they also, for the short ride, like the one hour one, they only made, like they let seven year olds and older go. But for these longer rides, you need to be at least 10 years old. But that's really all you have to have going for you. They'll let anyone. <laughs> oh, and I think understand English is pretty important just so that you can understand the instructions from the guides. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about these mules at the Grand Canyon and why they use them. Mules are really interesting animals, and in my mind, I was thinking a mule was kind of small. I know they're a mix between a donkey and a horse, but for some reason I thought a mule was small. But when I met my mule, its name was Gus, and he was awesome. Gus was huge. Gus was bigger than a typical horse. On the tours, they take great care to make sure people are safe, and so there's usually one Wrangler for every 10 riders, or like on the big one down into the canyon, they do one Wrangler for every seven riders. But as I had a Wrangler next to me as we were going, I asked him all sorts of questions about these mules. And he was telling me that a female mule is named a Molly, 
and a male mule is called a John. And he was telling me about, I, he said that mules are always a female horse and a male donkey. And I actually kind of heard that. I knew that the opposite of that was called a hinny. But I said, well, why, why is it important to have a female horse and a male donkey? And he said, well, you know, mules are bred because it's a, they get good traits from both the horse and the donkey. So the donkeys, they get the strength and they get the intelligence. And they hopefully don't get the stubbornness because donkeys, even though they are strong and smart, don't really freely offer up their energy. Now horses, on the other hand, they're adventurous. They like to go see things around and so they'll, they'll happily give of their energy if they get to go on a little adventure. But horses are prey animals and so they do spook easily. If they, if they think something's gonna come get them, they're gonna run and they might not be thinking very well and that's why they want the mule in them. And so, they, but they always want the mother to be, to be the horse because that's who's going to raise this little baby mule. And they want, they want this mule to take on more of the horse's personality but have the strength and the intelligence of the donkey. And so that's kind of why they, they breed them the way they do. And, and they really are incredible. In fact, Matt is doing a whole other video about Brighty, a, a famous mule from the Grand Canyon. And when that video is ready, we'll have that link up here. You ought to watch it just because there's a lot of cool stories about the Grand Canyon and Brighty is one of them. Oh, but one thing to know about these mules is it is 100% true that these mules do like to hug the outside edge of the trail. Uh, but just trust your mule. They know what they're doing. They've done this so many times. In fact, they put a lot of training into these mules. The Wrangler that I was talking to, he does, you know, he, he's the, he was the one that trains all, all of them. And he says when they get a new mule, he rides them for about a year. He doesn't really have a specific time he puts on it because he says they're like people, some learn faster than others. But he rides them until he thinks that they're good enough. And then he'll let some of his other Wranglers ride them to make sure they're good before they would ever put a guest on it. So they have to go through the trainer, a Wrangler, and then they go to a guest. Now on the south rim, they have a pretty rigid process they do with these mules. So the first year, once again, they have the trainer ride it for the guide. The guide rides it for the first year. The second year, that mule becomes a packing mule. Phantom Ranch is a pretty incredible place and they have a nice restaurant down there, but they need to get all their gear down there, their food, and then they need to haul the trash out. And so there's mules that go in and out of the canyon every day besides the ones carrying people just to keep that Phantom Ranch running. And so second year, that's what the mule get to do is they'll get to go do that or they'll come along on the on the guided trail rides and they'll pack the gear. Third year, they'll let one of the Wranglers ride them. And if they do a good job doing that, then year four, then guests can ride them. But they really do want to make sure they're safe. And I have to say that I think that if there had been problems with people falling off into the Grand Canyon off of these mules, that probably wouldn't be something that was offered. So I, I think the accidents with that are very few and far between. Not saying that it's not scary, but that they, they really do care about their guest safety. Give this video a like if you are liking it so we can spread it and have people learn about the mules at the Grand Canyon. Now, if you're feeling like you want to go, let's talk about securing a mule ride. So you can go to the Grand Canyon website for the National Park and, and click on, on the mule rides and it will break it down by the North Rim or the South Rim. And from there, you know, like I said, South Rim is run by Zantara, so it'll take you to a different site and it will give you a link and a phone number and either one of those will work. But something you need to know is the South Rim rides fill up so fast. I, if you're going just on a weekday, normal time of year, you're gonna wanna book that four months in advance. If you're looking at a holiday or a weekend, you need a year in advance. If you, and if you're wanting to go into the canyon, that's just for the rim trail. If you're wanting to go into the canyon, they open up slots 15 months in advance and even then they do a lottery. This is a new dream of mine. I want to do this. And so I'm, I've like got it set on my calendar when I need to get on there and try to get in the lottery to, to go down to Phantom Ranch. But you've got to be thinking ahead. Now the North Rim is a little more forgiving. Um, since only 10% of people visit, they have about a four week recommendation to get your ride. But I probably made my reservation about three weeks in advance and they were full on some of the rides. I had to kind of just pick what was left. They said, depending on when you're coming, sometimes there's even walk-ups available. And even at the South Rim, there are cancellations. 
but for the most part you're going to want to be prepared and, and book that four weeks in advance and and both those companies it's easy to get a person on the phone so if it's not working out well doing it online you can do it on the phone too and if you are looking into booking a mule ride my guess is you are also going to the Grand Canyon and we have an entire video about everything you need to plan your whole trip I recommend you watch it it's about are the best sites our favorite things to do where to stay where to eat the weather all sorts of cool tips like that it's really gonna hold your hand and walk you through that whole planning process we also sell itineraries and audio guides um, for the Grand Canyon and other places they're on our website we're on the Rockies.com check that out if you wanted to skip this painful trip planning process and just have a plan it is really all you'll need it's wonderful I I can say that's because Matt does most of the work on it but it really is a, a nice resource to make your trip great okay so the day of what to expect you're gonna want to arrive usually an hour before your ride because they are gonna want to help get you all set up at the north rim you're gonna meet at the lodge and then they'll shuttle you over to the trail um, at the south rim they'll probably have you meet at the stables or bright angel lodge it just depends on the ride um, but they'll tell you all that information when you book it. Um, what to wear. Wear tennis shoes if you have them. Wear boots. Do not wear sandals. Make sure you have on a pair of pants. I was a complete noob when I went and didn't bring any pants with me, so I had to borrow my teenage son's pants. The other most important thing to know about these rides is to not bring a lot of stuff with you. Like really bring your camera and that is it. They'll provide you with water if you're doing one of the three hour rides, but any gear, backpacks can throw the weight off, they can fall off. <sighs> on one of our horseback rides we went on, I mean, that dropped a sunglasses and like a pile of horse pee. So <laughs> like it just, you just, they don't want you to have stuff that things can fall off. And so, and even with the hat, if you wear a hat, you know, you might want some sun protection, but make sure it fits snugly on your head and isn't gonna fly off because it actually scares the, the mules. And one of the rules they'll tell you when you get ready to go is they'll tell you, no leaning, no screaming. <laughs> okay, tell me who you're riding. I'm gonna ride Chi Chi. Slim. No, I'm riding Gus. I'm riding Slim. Not Secretariat? Not Secretariat. Okay, and you remember the two rules. No leaning, no screaming. <laughs> those horses, those mules know what they're doing, but yeah, if they like to walk on the edge of the canyon and they don't want you lean in to counter the weight, just sit up straight, trust the mule because they know what they're doing. It is a dream of mine to someday ride a mule into the, down to the Colorado River at the Grand Canyon. And um, as we were leaving ourselves, we saw someone coming up from the, from Phantom Ranch on their mule. They were just finishing their ride. And so I'd like to end this video with a quick interview we had. And so you can hear a little bit about the experience at Phantom Ranch. Thanks for watching. Okay, who do we got here? What's your name? Uh, I'm Gina. It's my 50th birthday today. Whoa, yeah, happy so to birthday. Go to, the, to go to Phantom Ranch was a lifelong, you know, kind of check it off the bucket list. And we did it last night. And you were able to get it on your birthday? On my birthday. Was How was that? How'd that I happen? I just kept checking the uh, Zentera site, you know, the Grand Canyon Lodges. And one day I was like, let me just check Phantom Ranch. And sure enough, it was on my actual birthday. I said, well, this is a sign, so I booked it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Gina? Gina. Phyllis, Gina's mom. Gina's mom? Yeah, my yes. mom. <laughs> what an amazing birthday. Yes. This yeah. is fantastic. And so you put in online, you have to put in online for this. Yeah, so you go on the Zentera uh, site and you can look for Phantom Ranch, which is, the, which is the ranch at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And you can either hike in and out or mule in and out. Thank goodness we chose to mule in and out because the hike is serious business. I can't even believe that some people do it. Um, and it was really scary, actually. <laughs> okay, so why was it so scary? Because they walk along the edge? The, the, well, one, but the ride down is a lot more treacherous than the ride up. The ride up was like a breeze going down because- They're kind of going clop, clop, clop. Yeah, you, you have gotta, to brace yourself. You got to brace yourself and, <laughs> so you don't flip over the mule. And the first and turn that the mule takes, it takes your breath away because you're, well, ours were both like rim, rim, I don't know what you're on, rim dwellers. They were so close to the end. You're kind of hanging over looking and it's really scary. <laughs> so the first, like you're kind of white knuckled, you know, until you get used to it. And then what's funny is you get to Indian Gardens, which is like four miles down, and then you're like, oh, like you think it must be close. But then you go down into another canyon and it's just on and on forever. And then you see the river, you're like, I'm close. And then there's a river trail that's even scarier because it's like sheer to the river. Oh, I have and heard of that. All right there on the mule, just <laughs> praying that the mule is as sure-footed as they tell you it is. <laughs> I have heard of that. And the heat, when 
they tell you drench your whole body with the water, you definitely do it. It is it was extremely hot. hot. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I noticed everybody had long sleeves coming up. They make so, us wear long oh, they make you yeah, wear them? Going up and going down too. Long sleeves, long, long pants, they make you wear, yes. Okay. And then, then, and then you try to spray yourself down or something, or you'd yeah, stop you'd at the stop at the stream and the stream dump and your water, it. you know, dump your clothes in and put them on. And it feels like at first you're like, oh, but then after a while you're like, oh, this is like natural air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so how much was it? it? I don't know. It was like six, maybe six hundred dollars or six fifty for the two of us, which includes you know the mule ride down, the night at Phantom Ranch, the ride up. We had a great cabin at Phantom Ranch, um, you know, and the food was great. Yeah. Really, really good. And food. They serve you breakfast. Mm -hmm. Lunch and dinner. We had a steak dinner last night down at the um, Phantom Ranch, and the uh, really old um, 19 early 1900s. I guess it was like 1911 or something. Stone cabin with bunk beds in it. It was just so hot. If it weren't so hot, I think it would have been more enjoyable. But it was like 117 down there. Oh baby. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so and then you got the lemonade down there. Lemonade, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> bottomless lemonade. Yeah. Okay, bottomless. If given a choice of the bourbon or the lemonade, we would choose yeah. lemonade. But I, did, I did have really. two um, white claws. <laughs> 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 I said, what do you have to drink? I said, do you have a hard apple cider, which sounded delicious, right? And they were like, no, but that's a good idea. And they go, we have white claws. I said, I'll take two. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, and so was it worth it? Oh, yeah, it was worth it. I mean, you know, sore bums and a little bit of... Um, Anxiety going down at first. It's it's it a, it's scary at first. I mean, but, but, but you kind of get used to it. Yeah, you do. I mean, well, you know, you do until you're like on again the river trail. And I look to the right. And I'm like, oh, why do I do that? Because like your heart kind of clenches and you, ah, you know, and trying to be one with the mule. <laughs> For sure. Okay, what time did you hey, wait? Was this you went down there yesterday yep. morning? Yeah. So you meet here at the corral at 5:45 a.m. The day you go down, they get you out quick, like 6.15, you're on your way down. You get down to um, Indian Gardens, which is a little oasis down there with the stream, at mm -hmm. about 9.30, you have lunch, and then you go the rest of the way. You get to Phantom Ranch by about 11.30. And then we slept for two hours, we were so exhausted. Yeah, yeah. and then woke up, we went and sat in the river, the Bright Angel Creek there, and cooled off, and uh, had dinner. And you go to bed pretty early, because you gotta wake up at 4.30 the next morning and do it all again. So you woke up at 4.30, yeah. and you're just getting up here now. Yep, yeah, that's at, right. uh, Let's see, what time have we got? About 12? Yeah, it's about yeah, noon or something like that. Is, yeah. You've, You've lost all sense. Yeah, yeah. You've lost all sense yeah. of reality. Yeah. And the, the way down is really the, I mean, because, and you keep thinking, must, the end must be near. And then you see more trail below you, just like you see from here. It just goes on forever, zigzagging down. And you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take? Uh, it only took about five hours, I guess. Took five hours to get down? Yeah, yeah. And how much to come up, get up? Well, I guess you well, would have left it about... They have to stop a lot more because of the, the mules, mules and the, yeah. you know, the heat and everything. But um, it just see, it was such an easier trip coming back. Actually, very enjoyable. <laughs> going okay, down so is a little... Compared to going down is treacherous. Yes. So, um, okay, where are you from? Uh, I live in San Francisco, and my mother lives in New Orleans. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So you just met up at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, met what? in Phoenix and drove up here. What an amazing day. Yep. Wow, two two cute ladies. Thank you so much. <laughs> 50. 50. Yes. 